Okay, thank you very much. Uh, it's a, an honor, a pleasure to be here uh, today uh, at the OR Society um, and Analytics. We've, we're a regular attendee at the, uh, the recruitment fair in, in Birmingham, where I think it's normally held. Uh, it's a fantastic organization, doing great work uh, with great people in, involved. Um, my name's Simon Babes, and I'm delighted to be here uh, today with, with Alison Herbert, uh, our client in Bath. Uh, Alison will tell you a bit about Bath uh, business Improvement District uh, and its objectives uh, in a minute. Um, but it's fantastic to stand up with a, a client. We've, we've been working together only for, for the last six months. Uh, so you're seeing sort of early feedback, early results, uh, an early uh, sort of assessment of, of the value. But that's the focus of, of what we're talking about today. It's about the value of, of the insights uh, that we've been delivering for Bath uh, since January of uh, 2019. So I'll tell you a bit about um, movement strategies and, and Alison, as I said, will tell you a bit about uh, business improvement districts uh, and, and what's happening in Bath. Um, the proposed uh, solution in response to the requirement that was set by the, the clients, Alice has done some fantastic work to, uh, to, to gather the relevant stakeholders within the city and uh, and actually collate a, a requirement statement that was very clear uh, and uh, presented that to, to us in a, in a very um, structured manner, which made uh, the, uh, responding to that uh, particularly uh, easy and, and enjoyable. Um, the, the data sets that we used in that response, I'll talk you through to give you a flavour of uh, the origin, the process and, and the outputs. Uh, Alison will take you through the, the dashboard that, we're, that we've delivered and that her team are, are accessing in Bath uh, and trying to use that to learn, extract and, and use uh, the insights uh, to liaise with their stakeholders and, uh, and, and position strategies and plans uh, and use this as, a, as, a, as that measure, measurement tool. The, we want to summarise, as I said, that the focus was impact and, and value so a, a bit of the, the end around uh, that, capturing that in a, in a slide. So in terms of a, a, a very quick uh, introduction, we're a, a, a consultant uh, business that's been around for about 15 years. A lot of work at the Olympics uh, is around people movement in crowded uh, places. We've always had the aspiration to measure uh, the movement of, of people. Uh, we've been able to simulate the movement of people uh, in a facility that's not yet uh, uh, delivered and operational, but always found it particularly difficult to, to measure the movement and behaviour uh, and decision-making of, of people in, uh, in actual existing spaces. So that's the journey that we've been on for, uh, for the last 15 years. And um, the, the work that we're doing with, with Telefonica uh, and O2 here in the UK, we deliver their data and insights uh, capability here in, in London. And we've got a, uh, a developing relationship with, with Cisco as well. And that's all around using location data and extracting insights from, from that data. We've been on that transition, on that pathway from consultant through uh, analytics through to uh, a SaaS and the productization of, of our knowledge and, and know-how. And that's the journey that working with, with Alison and her team has allowed us to, uh, to deliver to, to market our first SaaS product um, insights as a service really um, in, in Bath. Uh, so that's been a, uh, the focus over the, last, over the last six months. So in terms of, of positioning, and, and it's interesting to, to look at this, and this is clearly moving uh, all the time, but in terms of the breadth of uh, analysis or customer insight uh, that's available to organizations that are currently operating uh, both in the online and, and the offline space, uh, we've, we're positioning ourselves in this top right um, part of, of the two by two um, because the, the bringing together of rich data sets, uh, we, we, uh, our position is that uh, there's a lot more value and a lot more insight to be delivered if we can negotiate the, the interface between these uh, complex and large data sets. So I'll hand you over to, uh, to Alison now for a, an introduction to, to Bath. Hello. I kind of gave myself away um, my bringing a book with some notes written in pencil. 
Um, so thank you very much for uh, welcoming me to your event. I'm the client, so bear with me if I use the wrong technical language. Um, it, it, that's actually what Simon's had to deal with. Um, so, um, so first of all, I just thought I'd explain what a business improvement district is if you haven't come across one in your daily doings. Um, there are about 300 across the country. Um, they're all different. We all work on slightly different projects depending on where we are, but they are all unified by the way they're funded. It's a collective uh, pool of resource which is given to the bid by the um, constituent businesses within a defined geographical area. Um, and we're all unified by our purpose, which is to improve business vitality. So um, it means I have in Bath 700 or so stakeholders who are watching my every move to make sure that what we deliver is good value for money. Um, and what we deliver in Bath is typically cleaning. Uh, we have a team of street cleaners who, who add value to the work that the council already does. We, do, uh, we have night marshals who look after people late at night, making it a welcoming place. We're so welcoming, we even have a team of volunteers who will turn up at the station and greet you and give you a map and tell you how to find your way around the city. Um, and, and we run campaigns um, and events in the city, sometimes sponsoring them, sometimes doing it ourselves. Um, and we're very interested in city performance monitoring because, like all good businesses, we want to know whether the work that we're doing is actually having any impact at all. And not only do we want to know that as a team, um, the people who pay our salaries really want to know that. The small businesses on the high street, who we all know about from the news, every penny counts to them. So I have to deliver value. So um, we did a survey of our 700 um, members, um, just a kind of regular, you know, like you would, how do you feel about the services that are being delivered? And we were already gathering um, springboard footfall counter data, and we were already um, regularly reporting on our empty shops at ground floor level. And we were just using those as a kind of, this is how the city's going, uh, very generic um, uh, way of looking at the city. Um, and they came back to us and said, yes, it's great. Now we know that the city's busy on a lunchtime. 1.30 in the day is the busiest time in Bath. And much more busy on Saturdays and Sundays than on Mondays and Tuesdays. That's great. But now we want to know who they are, where they're coming from, how much money they've got, where they're spending it, you name it, what gender they are, <laughs> whether they wear shoes or boots, whatever. So um, we then worked together to draw up uh, our list of um, desires. Um, and um, this is reflected in this table. So our needs were to get much more appropriate measures. It's all very well known as, you know, this is a full room, but it'd be really interesting to know why you're here. Um, and, and then help all of our businesses who have diminishing marketing budgets, including, um, you know, our local tourist board and so on. Um, and understanding the economic of, uh, impact of our events, um, and, and then this anecdotal thing that came out of some focus groups that we did, um, which are higher end um, retailers. I don't know how many of you know Bath, um, but it's, it's a classy place. We've got some nice shops. We've got some luxury brands in Bath. And they had this perception, uh, that, that, and it came from a number of different places, that the regional shopper had disappeared. And um, the regional shopper, I don't think it's a formal thing. I think it's a Bath invention but where she it, typically it's a woman she comes just for the day she might come on the train she might come in her fancy car um, and um, she will spend hundreds of pounds on nice jewelry a nice haircut um, and a really lovely lunch with her friends and you do sometimes see them on the train going home um, and they've had a lovely day they have you know loads of bags quite pink cheeks um, and so we know we know a bit about the regional shopper anecdotally but we really wanted to understand if they had actually disappeared or or whether they were just being dominated by all the other millions of visitors so um so that was the task that we handed to um to simon and his team and uh, this is what they came up with Okay, thank you. So, summer uh, 2018 were our first conversations uh, in in Bath uh, to capture, um, or perhaps to update the, uh, the the team that Alison had uh, gathered together on what was possible, because uh, every quarter, or I, I'd say at the moment, there was a there's a new type of of location-based data uh, coming to the market <clears throat> at various levels of 
of, of quality and, and sample size and uh, methodology of, of collecting, collecting that data. So that was really the, the sort of the update uh, session. And then from there through to uh, January 19 was, was the procurement process that, that we went through uh, to successfully secure the work uh, to start delivery in, in that uh, first month of, of the year. So we've agreed a, a 12 month period, um, a, a, a SAS license effectively for, uh, for, for 12 months. We had a launch meeting on the 30th of April uh, in, in Bath and there was um, about 100 of, uh, of Valentin stakeholders, levy payers uh, in, in the room. And it was, a, it was a really successful event in the sense that we had the opportunity of, uh, of, of launching a product explaining uh, what was uh, being delivered and, and how we thought that um, that could be useful and started to deliver drip feed uh, some initial insights based on the first quarter of, of data. Uh, so really positive uh, first uh, impression, I think, from, from that event. But really what this graph is, is, is demonstrating is that actually it's the red zone that we're, that we're now in, and that's the, the period where we really need to demonstrate the value of, of the insights that are being delivered uh, by, by this new product. So in, in terms of the components of, um, of, of, of the product and, and where this data has been sourced uh, from, uh, and I've got a slide on, on each of, of these. So um, the, the, the two key anchor data sets, as it were, O2 and, and Visa. So O2 is, is giving us an understanding of, of who's visiting the high street, um, the demographic characteristics of, of that visitor and the frequency of, of that visitor as well. So anonymized, aggregated insights, so we're not looking at individuals, uh, rule of 10, so if, if any um, sort of particular segment of, of the population, uh, there's less than 10 individuals of uh, the visiting bath of that characteristic, then we, we don't report. Um, so it's very much at the, um, the, 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 the summary or the aggregated level. And, and Visa's interesting uh, because that's the first time that Visa, uh, if you're not a merchant, a, a Visa merchant, uh, that there's access to the insights that are collected by Visa. About one in three pound in the UK is spent uh, on a Visa debit or credit card. So very much in the same way that O2 uh, have around a third of the market share in the UK, uh, Visa's approximately the same. And then a range of, of other data sets from the public Wi-Fi that's yet to be powered up uh, in full, uh, and then uh, an aggregation of, of various sentiment uh, analysis, and then the springboard. We haven't replaced the, uh, the existing springboard uh, counters that are on the high streets. We're, we're, they're still in place, and we're ingesting those via, via an API. So a bit more detail on the, on the O2 uh, insights. There's 25 million users, so that includes uh, GIFGAF and and other um, virtual mobile network operators uh, hosted on the O2 network. And we also see uh, international roamers on the network as well. Um, and some of those are over-indexed in terms of those from um, Spain, for example, where there's a, a strong link between a, a, the holding company Telefonica based in Spain and O2, the, the brand in, um, in, in the UK. So lots of uh, roaming. Uh, from Telefonica customers. So um, the, the, the anonymous uh, aggregated uh, and extrapolated, so we understand the, the bias uh, by home location uh, and by demographic segment, so we can extrapolate up to the total population based on that very clear understanding of, of, of market share. So Visa have, uh, for, for a for a number of years, released the, the consumer spending index information, which is at, at a UK-wide uh, level an indicator of, of spend activity. And effectively, what we're doing here is, is creating a, a bespoke um, output of, of that data set, which is focused around Bath. So each merchant has a, a postcode um, attribute on their uh, point-of-sale device, and effectively, we're, we're querying for all of those uh, merchant devices that are in uh, the, the target areas of, of BA1 and, and BA2. 
the, the, the Wi-Fi analytics and, uh, and, and the use of Sankey diagrams, uh, which we've, we've been doing in, in retail, um, is, is sort of set up and, and ready to go. This is dummy data ahead of, of the public Wi-Fi being switched on um, fully by the, the local authority. But what we do expect to see is, is some interesting insights around by time of day and by day of week uh, and by season of the year. The, uh, the, the, these paths and these popular paths, the top 20 paths, say, uh, within the city to try and understand the, uh, the, the current behaviour and then as a benchmark or as a foundation for, for any uh, proposed change, uh, for example, either in marketing or messaging uh, or, 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 or street furniture or layout or uh, signage. So a bit on the, on the solution architecture, cloud-based, uh, and it's a... The challenge really is to, to gather the, the various data sets uh, that are all obviously in, in different formats with uh, different levels of, of granularity, uh, with, uh, with different uh, sort of delivery or, or sharing schedules uh, with, with us. Our objective is to get the best data uh, to the client, uh, the best insights delivered via the dashboard as, as soon as possible. So the, the sort of the, the refresh rate is, is as frequent as, as possible per data set. So a slide to, uh, to confirm around the, the, the data privacy focus in terms of the, um, the, the approach that's been adopted. Each of those data owners um, obviously has a, a, an obligation around data privacy, as do we as a, as a data processor. Uh, the, the data is anonymous and aggregated by the time it, it reaches uh, our team that's ingesting the data into the, uh, into the, into the dashboard sort of system. Uh, and we have a we recognise the the threat of um, of of uh, cyber attacks, for example, and, and move very quickly to to become uh, certified accredited on on Cyber Essentials Plus, for example. So I'm going to hand back over to, to Alison, who's going to talk you through the the, the dashboard. I'm 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 conscious that we've had a um, uh, the, the, of the previous uh, presentation. <laughs> I wish it would have been the other way around. Uh, <laughs> But we'll uh, yeah, have a conversation about that later. So over to you, Alison. So um, this is what the dash... This is page one of the dashboard, actually, in fairness. So you have separated it a bit for us. Um, and it's nice because it's all very pictorial. Um, so from our perspective, it, it, it's manageable. And we can look at um, individual areas if we want to. And we can download the source data. So uh, uh, I have a member of staff who knows what she's doing who downloads the data, and then if I have a particular query. Um, and in fact, when we share this with our resident businesses in the city, um, our intention is to run the first few um, quarterly reports as workshops. So we'll run a workshop so that they can, they can ask us the questions that they don't understand, and we can then adapt the way that we both visualise and present the information to them so that the, you know, the email circular is actually of some use to them because we're all learning um, and for me that's what's really exciting about this project i'm very proud that we're the first city to be working in this way um, so i just thought it might be interesting for you to pick out um, just one or two facts from each slide um, of, of how we've used things so in this corner here um, it tells us the top the top 10 spend by category and so what we learned that is in in the first quarter of the year um, spend on restaurants is higher than anything else. Well, that's, that shouldn't be a surprise to anybody. Um, you know, everybody knows that people are going to the high street for an experience more than to just shop. Um, and just from the visa perspective, so taking into account that's probably about a third of the total spend, um, people are spending about £300,000 a day on food and drink in a restaurant in Bath. Food and drink on its own, like Sainsbury's, kind of going to get a sandwich, is at the bottom. That's a much smaller amount. But what's really interesting to me, it all sounds very marvellous, that's great, you know, 300,000, a million pounds a day spent in our restaurants, sounds good. Um, but actually, the average spend is only 13 pounds. So that gives me a really good target. So what we can now do as a city, collaboratively, because that's what bids are all about, is get our transport hubs, so the car parks and the railway station, working together with our attractions, because actually, six million people go to Roman baths every year. We know that's why they come to Bath. Um, and our restaurants to try and co-brand opportunities and um, 
uh, little tasters or whatever, but, and, and co-promote each other so that we get people who are coming to the Roma bars to stay a little bit longer and spend a little bit more in our restaurants and you know, improve their viability. So, and that's a great target, £13 a head. Um, if, I've incre- you know, if by doing some kind of collective a- action, we can get it up to £17 a head. Um, how great would that be? And that would be really easy to demonstrate the, the value of that, of that initiative. Um, and it's no different than a restaurant saying, to, you know, training all their waitresses to always say, or waiters, sorry, to always say, would you like a coffee at the end of the meal, just to make sure you get that extra three pounds on every bill. Um, and um, it, it seems quite logical, and that's something quite exciting that we've already learnt um, from understanding our customers as a city a bit better. So... Um, This is the one that's going to tell us about that elusive regional shopper, this slide. So this gives us information. We can we can break it down by day, by time, um, and we can also look at um, uh, gender and age. So we could specifically target, if we wanted to, female visitors on a certain day, aged between 50 and 65, um, and look to see why would we choose any day rather than another. We could look to see the impact of an event on that particular target demographic, or an advert in, in, in the newspaper, or whatever, you know, whatever promotional material you might decide to use. So we can really measure, with quite some granularity, the impact on our high spending visitors. So um, those brown ones tell you the proportion of visitors to Bath who are from the low spend at the bottom to high spend categories. So we already attract a, 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 high, a person with a higher propensity to spend money, and then the top three spenders are on this side. Um, and I mean, in the first in the first three months, it hasn't really told us enough to to work on. We know that they came less. Rich people came less frequently in January than in in March. Maybe they're not attracted by January sales. You know, you could guess all sorts of things. Um, but I think this will start as events happen, and we then start to be able to see the impact of events. Um, and campaigns, you know, this is going to be much more interesting. Um, And then this one is the one that gets all of my levy payers really excited. I don't know why, but a map, going back to the lady before, um, a map seems to be a really strong way to communicate information. And it's it's not very complicated. Bath is the really dark blue bit in the middle, so more of our visitors, uh, are we looking at home location, are... Um, are, have a home location in, in, in ba- the Bath area. But um, what, um, what is interesting is, is the white bit uh, to the west of Bath, which is Bristol. And what that's showing us is that um, people from Bristol aren't coming to Bath. Um, and we were really surprised by this. We assumed that it's eight minutes on the train. It couldn't be easier. Um, uh, we assumed that there was a really good you know, cross, cross-pollination between the two cities. And in fact, ironically, Visit England and, um, and central government are urging our, our two cities to work really collaboratively and actually uh, incentivising our collaboration so that we're presenting the West of England on an international stage. But, um, and I guess the good thing about that is that we're already talking to each other as cities and hopefully out of that we might also be able to encourage people from Bristol to occasionally pop over to Bath. Um, and where no one's coming, again, that creates quite an interesting challenge. That might be about perception of Bath. I spoke to somebody in the hall just now and um, she said, oh yeah, Bath, tea shops. Well, you know... <laughs> Has sort of limited appeal. So we've obviously got some work to do to, um, to confound your expectations of Bath. There is an awful lot more than tea shops in Bath. Um, and, uh, um, and, um, but, but where it is successful, if you look at the sort of bluer areas um, south and to the east of the city, those are our market towns uh, feeding into the city, and they also have really strong um, public transport connections. I mean, Bristol does as well, but leaving Bristol to one side. Um, So we might choose to uh, modify our messaging. You know, we know that people from our neighbouring market towns know something about Bath. They know that you can you can shop there, or you can have a nice restaurant experience there. You can go to the cinema or the casino or all sorts of other things. Um, But so we might just need to um, keep reminding them rather than actually re-educating them where you know no one is coming. And if you. this, you can span, oh, I can say the word, you can pan out 
um, of this. And we, we've also discovered, we already knew, because you can hear it on the streets, but we've discovered more factually that our hunch that people from South Wales like coming to Bath is actually true. Um, and, but north of Birmingham, no one comes. <laughs> and, uh, and actually, maybe that's because when you stand in Manchester Station, um, you can see that there are trains to Bristol, but you don't realise that if you just get off in Bristol and spend another 10 minutes on the train, um, you'll be in Bath. Um, and so, again, maybe we could do some work in Manchester to see whether that has an impact. And what, what's brilliant is where there's an absolute absence of, um, of people, uh, we're going to look really marvellous. Um, uh, if, we, if we make it change, and we'll actually be able to see the impact of what we're doing. So just to put into context, though, um, we, it, we went live on the last day of April um, by the skin of our teeth at that, at that meeting. So we're only six weeks in to beginning to tease out this, so it's early days for us to make any decisions um, or you know, start, uh, start and acting upon the information that we're getting. But um, it's... Um, yeah, so you know, in a year's time, I think we'll probably in a, be in a much more interesting... We'll have more interesting tales to tell, I dare say. Um, and the only other thing I was going to say, if you are thinking about doing something like this in your area, the only reason it's been successful is because we've had a really strong partnership between the local authority. Even the police uh, were interested in the work that we were doing through there because Bath is a crowded place, so from a counter-terrorism perspective, it's quite interesting. Um, and um, and the, visitor, um, the visitor destination management organisation and the rugby club and other key um, stakeholders in the city were involved. Um, and, you know, like all things, public sector procurement being the marvellous beast that it is, is just quite, not quite there with having all of our Wi-Fi points. But this is the data that's going to be very interesting to the public realm and the planning team and the local authority. Um, and also, um, anyone else like the rugby club in Bath happen to be going through a big... Um, they're trying to build a new stadium, so they'll be able to use this information to help to um, demonstrate how people currently walk through the city and, and how they are um, managing the way that their new, larger stadium, which will attract more people, will get people to move through the city. So there are loads of applications, just time and imagination and patience. <laughs> so... Um, Oh, and then this one, sorry, I forgot about this one. This one is about replacing, you know that lady who comes up to you in the supermarket with a clipboard and says, so, why are you here today? Are you having a nice time? Or, you know, what was your experience like? And that's very time-consuming and very expensive and a bit of, um, and, and just such a pinpoint moment. Um, so we will continue to do that sort of um, shopping bag survey work. But um, this is a sort of automated version. So it gives us... Um, the flavour uh, of uh, social media comments about Bath in that, in that corner. Um, Simon calls it Twitter polarity, but that just makes me think of Return to the Forbidden Planet. And so I'm, I'm lost on that one. Um, and then we've done uh, tweets by theme, which isn't very revealing, um, because the best day is like, which, which is great, but, you know, it doesn't... We're not... Oh, there's nothing we can act on there, but... Um, but it, um, I think it, where it would be interesting would it be if we had some kind of really bad event or um, you know, news in Bath, um, then we perhaps could see a change there. And then the web interests, are both regional and Bath City Centre, um, also gives us you know, the types of people, what kinds of things they like, who live um, in either regionally or in the city. So again, I just gave an example to Simon. I've got two pictures on my table from two people who would like to run events in the city and they would like me to invest in their events. And one is a kind of country living style fair um, and the other is an electric car show. So in deciding which one would be the most likely to be successful in Bath, I might look at the interests of... Um, the, the web interests of the regional customers of Bath. Um, and... Um, Hard to say how you would come out of that. Um, style and fashion seems to be the top thing, doesn't it? So uh, neither of those are saying, just go do me a fashion show. But it, um, it, it, it's another benchmark, um, and it's uh, automated, and you know, we can look at it as much or as little as we want to, but it's never turned off, um, which, is, which is great. So I'm going to stop now. I've probably talked enough, but um, I'll hand over to Simon. Uh, so conscious about time. Uh, just a, a, a deeper dive. Uh, the, the percentage of spend 
uh, by distance of home location versus the, uh, the, the volume of visits. So that's the sort of analysis that, that uh, Mary and, and Alison's team will be able to undertake and, and report on uh, as a measurement tool. And they like that whole snappy line underneath going back to, you know, it's all very well having numbers, but they actually, they wanted words. Uh, yep, um, the headline there. So uh, in summary, um, in, in terms of what we've, we've, we've uh, found or, or, or discovered, uh, those areas of, of value that we sort of promised to deliver um, and then that managing expectation around the delivery pace as we build up the library of, of, and, and the benchmark data of, uh, of, from the, the Movement Insights tool. Uh, PR opportunity, just to pick on the last one, has been a real uh, significant sort of plus in the, in the first few months. Uh, Bath uh, is, is obviously looking for, for those good news stories into the digital space, which is very crowded, uh, and therefore a, um, a, a highlighting, a piloting of, of this sort of project has, has been a good thing. Uh, in terms of the, of the impact to date, I think the launch event in, in April uh, and that, that collective purchasing power, uh, that's exactly why bids were, were set up. So, so actually for Alison to have delivered on, on her mandate was, was a great milestone to, 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 to be part of. Uh, in terms of the, the next steps, we've talked about building up the library of, um, of, of the data and, and the insights. Uh, and I think, as, as Alison said, this time in, in 12 months' time, then the ability to, to understand it in greater depth uh, to answer more questions and perhaps even to, to look forward uh, will we'll, we'll start to emerge as, a, as an opportunity. So Bath is a first adopter, uh, really high quality data sets. We've got a stand upstairs actually, so if, there's, if there are questions, I think we've over consumed our, our time uh, here, uh, that we're, we're around to, to answer those. Um, so thank you very much for the opportunity and, and thanks very much to, to Alison for, for joining me here on, on stage. Brilliant, thank you.